Hey guys, Matt Winslow here back for Fusion 360 Part 2. Now this one's going to be a marathon, so feel free to pause it at any time. What I'd like you to do is open up Fusion 360 and follow along with me because we're going to be going over some advanced CAD concepts. And at any point, just pause the video, rewind, um, you know, because I want you to follow along and be able to actually perform the things that I'm performing right along with me. So let's jump into it. First thing that we're going to do is we're going to uh, do a revolve. Um, now a revolve is going to be if we're going to create like a cylindrical item or something like that. So again, in the last video, you should know how to create a sketch by now. So go ahead and create a sketch. And hitting the L command or line tool, I'm just going to go ahead and from this origin, sketch something random. All right, doesn't need to be pretty at all. Just do your thing. And then I'm going to come back to the center, okay? If I hit the T command for trim, I can trim things. So I'm gonna trim that. And now, I can hit, go back to my solid tab and do a revolve. So the first thing I'm gonna do is select my profile, which it's already selected, and then the axis that I want to revolve it around. So if I were to select that axis, it's going to revolve it completely around. And I can create a new body, or I can create a new component. In this case, I'm gonna create a new component. And that kind of looks like a, I don't know, a gear shifter knob. So I can highlight that and call it gear shifter knob. All right. So now I have an actual, uh, another component within my larger part file. So if I were to save this, I can save this in that Davis Tech uh, folder and I can call it you know, shifter assembly. Okay, so I've got the gear shifter knob. The next thing that I want to do is I want to create, let's say, the actual, you know, stick. All right. So the nice thing is, is if I want to create another component, I can do that. But I want, I might as well use that gear shifter knob to you know, pattern my, uh, my stick off of. So you can see that this uh, plane bisects the center of that gear shifter knob. So I'm gonna select that when I'm creating this. Now I can hit L again for line and I can have it come down. I go straight to the center and up, okay. Now, from the center of that line to my part, this is going to be the radius of what I want that stick to be. So if I want it to be a diameter of an inch, I'm going to make it half an inch. And notice that that did not constrain correctly. So if I want this, I want to always work off the center when I'm revolving. So I can do that with a coincident command. So I highlighted this line and then I hit command or uh, control on a windows and then I selected this dot. And I'm gonna hit the coincidence constraint. Now you can see that it's constrained, it's fully black. The only other thing that I need to do is I need to give it a length. And let's say it's four inches, all right? Now, I can go ahead and come up to solid, revolve. I've got my axis that I need to choose, and voila, okay? Now I've got a little gear shifter, okay? Now, if, if I were to hit uh, Control-Z, or if I come back here down to this revolve, 
and I hit Edit Feature, I can actually make that a new body as well. And then from making it a new body, I could actually turn that into another component. Um, I don't want to do that, so, uh, but we're going to move on. That is the Revolve command. I like to do that whenever I'm designing parts that need to be machined on lathe or something like that. Um, I, I, I use the revolve. Imagine making like a, a, a vase or um, something of that nature. It's nice to use the revolve command because then you only have to make a, an outside shape and then revolve it. The next thing that we're going to, to do is a sweep. I'm just going to add a new design here. I'm going to create a sketch. Let's do an easy circle. So I can hit C for circle. <clears throat> I can hit the D command to dimension it. Let's make that two and a half inches. And I'm going to finish the sketch. I'm not going to extrude it. The next thing I'm going to do is create a top sketch okay and I'm gonna work from my circle so I'm gonna have a line and I'm gonna hit L for line and I'm gonna click on that first vertice let's say maybe I want to add a radius so or an arc so I'm gonna do a tangent arc and I'm gonna hit that. The nice thing about tangent arc, it'll make it completely tangent from, let's go the other way. So now we've got a nice tangent arc, all right? And you can see that it's tangent because you have these constraints that show tangency. And again, that's that constraint right up there. So if they weren't, I could click that, click the arcs that I want, or arcs and lines that I want to be tangent by using Command on a Mac or Control on a Windows, and then constraining them. Okay, so I'm going to finish that sketch. So you can see what this looks like in 3D space. I've got a circle with a path. So I've got a shape and a path. I come to Create and sweep. The first thing it's going to ask is for the profile. Think of that as the shape. Next is the path. Path is going to be that sketch that I created from the top. And now I can, you know, again, new theme. I can create a new component, new body. In this case, it'll just be a new body. And look at that. I've got a relatively complex shape that was created in about a minute. So by utilizing shapes and paths, and again, they have to intersect one another for this to work, you can create some pretty complex geometry. If I want to go back and change either of those, I'm going to rename this one the shape, and I'm going to rename So this one is the shape, and that one is the path. Okay, so I'm going to change my shape, and all I have to do is edit the sketch. So let's say I wanted to make that a pipe. Well, I'll just add a circle in there. I go back to my sweep and hit Edit Feature, and instead of that shape, I want that shape. Okay, and now you've got a tube, so to speak. So shapes uh, or sweeps uh, can be complicated, but don't let them be so. Um, again, all you have, the, the two major components, are the shape and the path. Okay, so if I bring this back and I activate my sketches... Again, you can see how that works. OK, 
Okay, I want to go talk uh, about holes, all right? You're going to use these all the time. So let's add a new design. Let's create a sketch. And let's create a rectangular feature. So I can hit this rectangle up here, two-point rectangle. Start in lower left-hand corner on the origin. And just non-discriminately make a, a rectangle. You can hit D for dimension. I'll dimension that. Let's make it three inches. Let's make it a square, three inches by three inches. And then I'm going to extrude that. Let's make it one inch. And now I've got a piece of stock. Okay. Now, I want to create my whole vertices, so to speak. So I'm going to create this plane, and I'm going to, under create, I'm going to come to, uh, where is it, point. There it is. And I'm just going to create four points. Now I can dimension them off of this lower left-hand corner. So I'll make that one an inch. I'll make an inch by an inch. Now, I can use constraints to make this go a lot faster. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to constraints, and I'm going to hit horizontal and vertical. So I want these two to be vertical. I want these two to be horizontal. I want these two to be horizontal. And I want these two to be vertical. Easy. Now you can see that everything is constrained, so you've got horizontal and vertical constraints. Last thing that I need to do is I just need to give this a dimension. So let's make that two inches. And you see how both of these changed. I also need to give this one a height. Let's make it two inches as well. Okay, easy. I'm gonna hit finish sketch. And I've got my points right there and their dimension and everything. Next, I'm going to come up under the solid tab and hit hole. And I'm going to select multiple. And I can just select all my holes. Okay. Now, this is the cool thing about Fusion is that they, they take all the guesswork out of it. So if I want to be a tapped hole, I can do that. And under here, it's, maybe you can't see that because of my face, but um, you can choose ANSI Unified Screw Threads, which is what you're going to be using in a machine shop. And I can say, well, I want the major diameter to be, let's call it, let's call it a half inch. So I can do... Um, uh, let's do a quarter inch. Let's do a quarter 20, which is going to be a very common thread size. I can designate the class. In this case, I'll have it be 2B, a right-handed thread. And then I can choose how deep I want to go with these. I can have them go through. I can have them stop. But notice how we also have a drill point. So it's smart enough to know that, hey, you're going to be using a drill to create this hole. So... Uh, Fusion will include the drill point on there, which is pretty nice. And you can change that uh, to, you know, 135 if you want. Um, 118 is going to be the most common. Uh, and then you can change the flat if you want, if, if you were going to be using an end mill or something like that. Um, so there's a lot of different options on here. Let's, let's make it a counter bore as well. So let's say that maybe we're using a cap screw. And uh, so right here we've got the diameter. Let's make that 375 thou. And I'm going to make that 3 16 deep. Okay. And hit OK. Oh, last thing I want to do is I want to scroll down. And I want to choose if they're modeled or not, okay? So modeled means that they will actually be 
be modeled. See how we have modeled threads, how easy that was. Or if we come back to this and hit edit feature, we can choose non-modeled. And these will just kind of give you a graphical overlay. They don't look as sexy, but when you're using cam, it's actually easier to uh, work off of this modeled, or uh, excuse me, non-modeled thread that is an actual thread. And it'll also take less computing power. But if you're trying to show a working model, I like model. It certainly looks better. All right. Now, if I want to change the whole positions, all I have to do is activate and edit this sketch. And I can change them. Change that one to three inches. Uh, actually, I won't make it two and a half. I can make this 0.5, make this 2.5, and, and this 0.5. Once I finish the sketch, it'll dynamically update, and now I've got my new whole positions. All right. What if I want to make a whole bunch of holes and but I didn't want to sketch them all out. The easy way of doing that is I'm going to create a new sketch. I'm going to use this back. And I'm going to hit point. I'll make a point. I'll dimension it. Let's make it half by half. And now I can create a pattern. So under Create, hit Rectangular Pattern. The object is this point. The distance type, I want to have spacing. That means it's going to be spaced in between each dot. I'm going to do five of them, and the distance, they're going to be 0 0.250. You know what? Let's make it half inch in between. And I'm going to make five of them. In my next direction, you can just drag and drop that. I want four of them, but I want them to be 0.75 deep. Okay. Now, the cool thing about this is it's giving me the option to deselect um, some of the ones I don't want. So maybe I choose that I don't want, you know, two of those on there. I can easily do that, all right? So I hit OK, and now I've got all my features. And then it becomes really easy to just add, add my holes, all right? You can choose those, or you can just pick which ones you want, which ones you don't. And instead of making that threaded, I'm just going to make that a hole. And in this case, I can make it a, let's make it a number 10 socket head cap screw. Okay. And they do all the work for you. That's what's really cool about this. They've built into this, um, this kind of library you can choose any size thread that you want. So I can go up to 3 8 or I can go down to number 8, and it will automatically do that for me. Okay. So I've got a number 8. You can see my drill point on there. And that's an easy way of doing holes and patterns. And again, you can pattern just about anything. I could actually pattern a whole feature. And if I wanted to pattern a feature, I'd come to Create, Pattern. I can do a circular pattern. Um, you know what? Let's do a circular pattern. I want to create a sketch. And I want this. Let's see. I'm just going to create a 
pattern like that. I'm going to create a circular pattern. So the object the axis or I can actually do it here. That's the axis. Okay, so what if I want to create a pattern of a feature? Well, I can easily do that, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a sketch. I'm gonna have a circle. Make that not so big. And I need to have the center bisecting that edge. So I can hit Command, and I'll select both of these, or Control if you're on Windows, and hit Coincident. That way, this circle is bisecting the center axis of that feature. Next, I can hit Create, Pattern, Circular Pattern, and I can select my objects. So I want this entire counterboard hole patterned in a circle. So I just select my, my objects, then I select my axis, which is going to be the hole I just drew. And I want four of those guys, okay? And I want them to just be, um, well, four will be a 360, so it'll be 360 divided by four, which will give you the angle. Or you can choose what angle. So maybe it's 270 degrees, but in this case I want to just do full. Hit OK and now oh, have that sketch. Now I've got a you know these counterboard uh, cap screw holes on a circular pattern. So Pretty cool stuff that you can do with patterns. It can save you a lot of time. Okay, uh, the next thing I want to go into is um, this, this press pull feature right here. This is kind of cool because it will basically just modify whatever uh, geometry you, you select. For instance, I could select this, okay, and I could make it bigger. And it's actually going to make all of them bigger, or it can make them all smaller. So the press pull feature, maybe I just want to make this feature bigger or taller. It'll do that, but you can also really screw things up. So know that the, the press, pull fe press pull feature is good um, if you're not going to screw anything up. Um, in this case, because I'm adding, um, you know, 100 thou or so onto this, it's changing the depth of my holes. In other words, well, the holes are staying the same depth, um, but they're not going to go the same depth anymore. So that may or may not work for your situation. Um, again, you could always go back to your original extrusion, and you can add it there okay and then everything will scale proportionately so the press pull feature is pretty cool but again it can screw things up on your feature tree so be careful using it go ahead and go into a new design and we're going to go into assemblies assemblies are awesome they're they're some of my favorite things to do uh, because Fusion is so powerful that you can actually use CAM within your assemblies, which is very, very powerful. So think if you had a vice jaw, um, which is something that we're going to create right now. 
So let's create a vice jaw, and I know that those are six inches or so. So I'll dimension this at six inches. I can create a, a, a constraint again. I click this one, I hit Control or Shift. I go under Constraints and I say Collinear. That means those lines are going to be in line with each other. Do the same thing with that one. I can make these two lines equal. So I hit the Equal thing. And then I can go ahead and dimension them. I'll say that's an inch and a half. And I'll say that this is three inches. I like three inches, three inches, two inches, or one inch because I can actually put a one, two, three block in between my vice jaws, clamp it down, and then I can machine my, my uh, vice jaws. So what happens if I want to hold a cylindrical part in these vice jaws? Well, that becomes very easy, and I'll show you that. I want to extrude these two, so I click the two, Command or Control, hit Extrude, and my vice jaws are like an inch and three quarters or something like that. I want to create another sketch. And I'm going to, I need to hold a two inch part, okay? So I make a two inch circle. I'm gonna dimension that and say that it is 0.5 away. And three inches, which is halfway in between. I'm going to create a center line. I'm going to click it and put X and make it construction geometry. And this is going to be one and a half inches away because that entire gap between here and here is three inches. Okay. So now I'm going to mirror it over that plane. Okay. So I'm going to take this and my mirror line is going to be there, and I'm going to hit OK. So easy, done. The next thing, I'm going to cut these parts of my vice jaw. And I need to grab on to, let's call it, three quarters of an inch of that. Okay. Now, I've got a really slick way of cutting my vice jaws. All right. But what if I want to add my stock in there? Well, the way that I would do this is I would add another component, and I'd add that component um, as an assembly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new sketch. And I'm going to actually just create it out here. And remember when I said, remember when I said that my, uh, dimension. I was trying to hold on to two inch stock. Well, there we go. I'm going to click on this and extrude it. But this time, instead of having a new body, I'm going to choose new component. And my stock is three inches. I'm going to call that good. And now what I need to do is I need to actually move this over to there, because this is my fixed jaw. But instead of manually dragging it and lining it up, which you could do, it would just be very time consuming and it wouldn't be perfect. The easier way is to add a joint. So up here under this assembly tab, you have what's called joint. I'm going to go ahead and it says some components have moved, and that's true because I've been moving this around. Um, just choose Capture Position, and that is totally fine. It's just going to capture it where it is. Now, it says 
pick your first component. In this case, I want the, uh, the center of this to match the center of this, okay? So I can choose this, uh, this point right here. And the next thing I want to actually choose is this point in the center there. But as soon as I move away, it disappears. So the way that you can keep that there is hit Command or Control. And then you can move it and select the center. All right. I hit OK. And now I've got a nice component. Okay, so this component I can rename as the stock. And this up here I could rename as my, my vice jaws. So if I wanted to get rid of the stock and hide that and make some changes, I can easily do that. Okay, guys, so just to recap, um, we're going to go ahead and use this same vice jaw um, for our, our next video, which is going to get into cam. So go ahead and save that. Um, we went over uh, how to do revolves, how to do sweeps, how to do holes and threads, patterns, mirrors, and assemblies. Hopefully that was uh, you know, quite enough to get you guys going on whatever you need to design. Um, again, Fusion is super, super powerful, but those are the ones I feel you'll be best utilized using. And in this next one, we're going to dive into what my favorite portion of Fusion 360 is, and that's the uh, CAM side, the computer aid manufacturing side. Um, so stay tuned for video three, and we'll get into CAM. Thanks, guys.